everybody, and welcome to our presentation of Western Buckeye League High School Soccer on WLSN. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Gary Snodgrass. We get ready for what should be a good one. Ottawa Glendorf, the Lady Titans, coming in at 1-1-1, one, one, and one, playing host to the Wapakoneta Redskins at 1-2 and two on the season. Jerry, always important to get off to a good start when it comes to league play, and that's what both teams will be trying to do today. You know it is, and Coach Michelle Mag for Ottawa, always, uh, for OG, always has her girls ready. You know, the, the opening game, uh, a beautiful day. Wind was a factor earlier in the day, but it's really died down. So it really should be a great opening match uh, in the Western Buckeye League. Absolutely. The field in great shape. And, of course, this Ottawa Glendorf team brings back a lot from last year uh, that were able to do some damage in the Western Buckeye League. They'll be expected to be among the top teams at the end of the year. But you bring back players like McKenna Seifker. She already has six goals on the season in three and three games. That's not too bad. If my math's correct, that's two goals a game. Exactly. And I think, I think Madison Springer, yeah. keeper for the Redskins, really going to be tested today. Absolutely. Look for Ottawa Glandorf to probably put some pressure up high, try and start the scoring out early, really set that tone and take advantage of the home field today. They sure are. And, you know, again, you don't want to start, you know, in this conference you, or in this league, you do not want to start out. 0-1. So, again, all the pressure on, but should be a good match. We do know that Wapak battling some injuries. So, But early in the season, there's young players really trying to establish, them, establish themselves on the field, find some extra playing time. They're getting those opportunities early. We'll see what the younger Redskins can do today. And we are early in the season, yes. and that's one of the things that you know I, I should have mentioned early on. You're right, some early season injuries. But, again, you know, you're not trying to beat the world in your first <laughs> games, although this is an important game. But at the same time, constant improvement it is early but we'll take a break when we come back it'll be time for first half action right here on WOSN Welcome into our broadcast of today's Western Buckeye League girls soccer game between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Wapakoneta Redskins. Again, Ottawa Glendorf coming in at 1-1-1, one, one, and one, Wapak at 1-2. and two. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Set to bring you all of today's contest between these two Western Buckeye League schools. Again, Ottawa Glendorf really tested out of the gate, uh, Jerry. And played Anthony Wayne, had a 3-3 draw there. Anthony Wayne, certainly a stalwart in soccer in Northwest Ohio. They have a 6 nothing win over Evergreen, and then uh, lost 5-1 to to a very strong Perrysburg club. Yeah, exactly. You know, you talk about the W, uh, excuse me, the NLL, the Northern yeah. Mixed League. They are a very, very good soccer programs from top to bottom so you're right right out of the gate so uh, good competition and again the other thing you really have to look at I think in this game is look at the number of uh, underclass uh, girls yeah. that are starting for uh, Wapakoneta and the experience returning for OG so you know that could play a, a big big role in today's game. Clara Beach trying to turn the corner there earlier Lawrence took it away for Wapakoneta now it's Paige Olberding bringing it down on the left side. Olberding has a goal on the season. That'll be cleared away by the Titan defense, and no harm done there. Wapak, in the meantime, two losses on the year. One to Miller City, one nothing. One to Bluffton, 4 nothing. But they have a 2 nothing win over Bowling Green coming into today's contest. Throw in, found its way to uh, Mackenzie Recker. She had it stolen away momentarily. Good defense applied by Heidi Schlenker here on the near side. But a quick throw in right back to Beach on the right wing. Cross into the middle, and that is going to be chipped. It'll be just a little bit short. That was Kaser Carson Erford getting a foot on it. Couldn't quite get a shot on goal. Really just kind of chipped it up. Easy work for Madison Springer, the junior goalkeeper for the Redskins. That was a great uh, cross by Clara Beach. Definitely. You can see where I would imagine the Titans are going to try and press the top uh, here in their attacking third in the early goings. And they're trying to establish that momentum right away. Throw in Redskins. That one's headed straight up and out of bounds by Mackenzie Recker, junior yeah. midfielder. You know, another interesting factor, you know, as we are very early opening WBL match, but is the shortened preseason now that soccer teams have. Um, really, it was a... Uh, it was a repercussion, I think, of the football expansion of the right. playoffs. You know, that soccer now, in order to give it its 
they no longer sponsor a Friday night football, but but nonetheless, they gave them a game on that weekend. So the season actually opens early. So you have very very little time between uh, opening day of practice on August one and the first day of your first game. Cross into the box. That one initially set down by the Wapak defense. A free for all and be cleared away by the defensive back or the center back rather for the Redskins and harm averted for Wapak in that moment. Battle for possession in midfield. It's interesting you bring up with the, the compressed season or the compressed preseason. I thought that uh, the preseason training for my son's team was less Correct. than what mine was when I was in high school. Yeah. Not so many gassers when you have that last week. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a real challenge, too. I mean, you know, because it really taxes kids in its own way. I mean, we all know they play travel ball in the summer, you know, and they have the 10 days in which they can compete as a team. We'll get back to that in a second. Attack coming in from the left side. Bree Douglas, that last touch got maybe a little bit further than she where she wanted it. Madison Springer able to come out and get it. But OG showing some uh, attack here in the first few minutes of this contest. But you know, too, Doug, I would also contend that that's a uh, – the impact of that, too, is less and less kids playing. And we saw that, you know, with a shortened team, let alone the injuries for Wapakoneta. You know, only half played in the JV game. That's a good point. That was almost a nice through ball for OG. I believe they would have been called for offsides, but it was stolen away. McCain, ba Bailey sends it forward, gets it to Oberding, tries to cross into the middle. That is nicely taken away by Madeline Hovist. Hovist, a junior defender. Made a nice stick there on the right sideline. Ball is chipped into the middle of the field, bounces back out to the right. Little battle for possession ensuing. Sent forward and opportunity for an attack here as Hannah Wood has it over on the right side. She's chased down by Savannah Wrecker. And that'll go out of bounds throw and coming Walpock. And that's the first opportunity we've seen Walpock to push up into their attacking third. Yeah, and you know, through the first five minutes, I know we're only five minutes in, but you know, they're holding their own very yeah. well. I always feel like the first 10 minutes of a high school soccer contest, generally a feeling out period where yep. the styles, you're going to see how they mesh and where you can maybe exploit a weakness on the other team. But those first 10 minutes generally take a little while before you see how the flow of this game is going to go. You hear that a lot from coaches too, you know, all the scouting, all the watching video, all the preparation, but the reality is on the field. <laughs> you know, there are so many factors that enter into it. You know, so you're right. Those first 10 minutes are so critical in a soccer match. Ball deflected. Wapak will put it into the box. That one just bounces wide to the left from the right side. That'll be a shot just off the mark for the Redskins. Their first shot opportunity of the ball game. And I think that was Madeline Hovis that took that shot. I believe you're correct on that. Or pardon me, uh, I think on that side it's Hannah Wood. Yes, you're right. You're right. So a shot opportunity will not find the mark. But Wapak nearly taking advantage of an error by the Titans and handling the ball on a clearance. Erford tries to send it forward. Erford with that left arm heavily bandaged yes. up there, but not a problem unless she has to take a throw. And her fingers are free there, so she probably can do that all right, too. Wapak takes that out of bounds near the corner flag. Quick throw as the Titans want to get on the attack here. Mackenzie Recker left foots it. That shot stopped by Madison Springer. Good shot, good save by Madison Springer, right at her. First shot of the goal for either team this game. In the sixth minute of the contest. The ball played out nicely to the outside to Bree Douglas. Douglas has wheels, she's got the corner, takes the right foot shot and is deflected, but it finds the back of the net. And Ottawa Glendorf will strike first. Bree Douglas with the shot on goal and the finish. And the Titans lead 1-0 with 34 minutes remaining in the first half of this Western Buckeye League contest. We are back right after this on WOSN. Back to the action here at Ottawa Glendorf's Athletic Complex where the Titans lead by a score of 1-0. The goal coming from Bree Douglas six minutes into this contest. Boy, Bree Douglas really showed her speed on that, too, didn't she? The junior forward just, you know, out-sprinted everybody on that. That's the second time we've seen her get around the corner and uh, take that attacking angle at the net. First time, it got away from her a little bit. Second time, made a nice touch, made a nice finish, and the Titans are up 1-0 in this Western Buckeye League contest. 
Carson Erford battling for possession with Kayla Carter. Carter takes it away. She boots it forward. Alberding giving chase, run off the ball by Megan Horseman. Horseman will come back and clear that one away. And now sent out of play. Last touch by the Redskins, Heidi Schlenker. And that's going to bring an OG sub in, Maya Herringhouse. Sophomore forward will check in, and she'll give Carson Erford a break. Throw in Ottawa Glandorf. Mackenzie Wrecker puts it in play, gets it right back. And that one's a souvenir coming in hot. No harm done in the stands as that one came yeah. ricocheting in Ottawa Glandorf ball. And a quick throw in, trying to take advantage on the offensive end. Haven't seen the Titans take too much time on a throw, and they're no. going to be called for an offsides there. Because they got just a little bit behind the last player on the Walpock defense. Now sometimes you'll see teams take a long time trying to set up, find where their runs are and everything. And sometimes you're all right, but other times you really have a mismatch. And if you get that quick throw in, you can exploit that mismatch. And the Titans trying to do that here in the early going with their throw ins. Michaela Bailey sends it forward, trying to get it to Oberding. Oberding getting challenged by Megan Horseman. That's going to be a matchup to watch the entire night, I think, Jerry. Yes, and Oberding only a freshman. I take that. Yeah, she is only a freshman. Plays forward and midfield, has one goal on the season. Alyssa Shaner, a junior, has the other goal for Walpock so far this year. Throw in, Oberding tries to center it. That was going to be sent towards midfield, getting a foot on it. Clara Beach. Beach sends it out to the left side. They get Douglas. Douglas wants to turn on the Jets again. She's got some numbers into the attacking third place forward. Here's the shot that is deflected. Loose ball, and the Titans wow. will stuff home the rebound to make it 2-0. 31-15 remains in the first half. The Titans lead 2-0 back with more on WOSN. Back at it here from the Ottawa Glendorf Athletic Complex. Doug Jenkins and Jerry Snodgrass with you on WOSN. The goal for Ottawa Glendorf is going to be scored by Clara Beach. Her first of the season makes it 2-0 Ottawa Glendorf. Nine minutes into this contest. And again, the Titan speed on that left side. Here we go again as coming out and having to attack that is going to be Madison Springer. And I think Springer's going to have to be very aggressive, especially on that right very side of the goal box. So. That last goal by Clara Beach set up beautifully by Bree Douglas. Now Douglas led the charge. She actually had a shot on goal. It was saved by Madison Springer, but it, the deflection went right. right back to Beach, and Beach put away the rebound. That's so important in soccer. You see teams that are very good at possession sometimes get a little passive when it comes to charging the box, Jerry. Yep. Uh, the Titans did not do that, and as a result, they put away a second goal. When I was coaching soccer, I always told my kids, keep moving forward yes. until the goalie picks it up. Make them handle the ball. Steal a midfield for Ottawa Glandorf. They'll send it out to the left wing. Pass forward. As they work it up to Savannah Recker, I believe that is. Recker takes it into the box. Going to drop it back. And that one going to bounce off of a tight and out of bounds. And it'll be a goal kick coming up now for the Redskins. And that left side of the field has just been so dominant right now by uh, the Titans. Now the Titans looking to play it that way. When they found something they like there with Bree Douglas being able to, to make that turn and attack. Here comes the goal kick off the foot of Madison Springer. Ball sent forward and chased down by the Titans. Savannah Wrecker, she'll play it up the line on the far side of the field. It goes right back to her. Now she'll play another one down the line. That one rolls for a while, but no Titans in the vicinity. McKenna Bailey will come up with it. Now Bailey is under some duress. She'll have to get rid of the ball. And the Titans look to put some pressure on the Wapak defensive back. Sent out of the middle of the goal box by Heidi Schlenker, the senior midfielder, dropping back in defense. Titans have it. Douglas looking for something on the left side, centering pass, deflected away. Redskins looking for clearance, not going to get it. Douglas gets it, uncorks one, and wow. puts it into the back yeah. of the net. <laughs> And Ottawa Glandorf makes it 3 0 with 28 49 remaining here in this first half of action. We'll take a timeout here 
on WOSM. Welcome back to the Ottawa Glendorf Athletic Complex. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN for girls high school soccer in the Western Buckeye League. Ottawa Glendorf off to a hot start. We've played just over 11 minutes of this contest and the Titans lead the Redskins of Wapkinetta 3-0. Bree Douglas, the second goal, her second goal, the Titans third coming there and just absolutely a blast from the left side of the goal box. And the Titans going to sub in. Well, I didn't see who they subbed in, Jerry, but it was a crowd pleaser as yes, it was. Megan Horseman comes out. I think it was Maggie Verhoff came in. I think you're right. We'll keep Senior an eye defender. out. Defender. Going away with the ball there is Madeline Hovist. Hovist sends it forward over to the right side. Maya Herringhouse. That one bounced up. Hit her hand, but her hand was kind of within the frame yep. of her body, so you won't get the... Most likely will not right, get right. the handball. I don't you hear want to a lot say of people yell yeah. about that, but it's, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the whistle will blow on that. Oftentimes not, as long as it's not egregious. Right. Throw in Wapakoneta. Michaela Bailey trying to send it forward. And this is where the Titans, again, putting so much pressure on the defense for Wapak and not letting them handle the ball, see the field, and distribute it downfield. The ball is dug out of there by Savannah Recker. Trying to get it away from Oberding. There's a pass in the middle, trying to get it to Douglas. Douglas shielded away from the ball. Still trying to get her foot on it. Even when you think you've got her away from it, she keeps working. That's how she scored that second goal. We have a perfect view of that. It, it looks like, okay, this is that's not a good pass, or you know, it's an errant <laughs> pass, and she just comes out of nowhere. Send it into space and let your speed catch up to it as the Titans come away with the ball near midfield. Pass forward to the right side, looking for Herringhouse. Herringhouse is going to be challenged here on the near sideline. It's going to be Audrey Sparks, the junior defender, in pursuit. Knocks it off of the navy blue jersey and a throw in coming in for Wapak. Heidi Schlenker sends it down the left sideline. That one will be put down by Savannah Recker. And Micah Aldridge hangs on to it. Sends it left side. Aldridge has been a mainstay on this OG roster for her three years in high school as a junior. Very tough uh, midfielder for the Titans. Yes, you see, you know, I think you can really see right now the, the difference in the experience. You know, the younger, the youth right now, let alone, you know, again, they are missing several players for Wapakoneta. Yeah, the Redskins have had some injuries, that's for sure. Wrecker. Let's get to the top of the box on there. Dishes off right side to Wrecker. Wrecker, shot will be wide to the right, and it'll be a goal kick forthcoming for the Redskins. Substitution coming back in. Aldrich will take a breather. And into the lineup comes Marissa Brown, a junior midfielder. You can kind of see the depth for these teams in action, too. Yeah, we haven't sure seen Wapak nearly as... Uh, they haven't subbed nearly as much. I think Olberty got a brief break, but she's back out on the field for the Redskins. They need her out there. She's their firepower, especially on this left side. Bailing drops it back. Played down, Olberding. Nice job bringing it down. Passes right side. Well, Wapak has a really good youth soccer program, though, and uh, they've developed some good players. So, you know, you got to imagine at full strength, this is a team that really is going to they're going to compete and be dangerous to a lot of western buckeye league teams and through the years yeah. they have had great soccer um you know again starting at the younger levels but have always been very very competitive and very good and that one's going to run out of bounds last touched by wapak giving chase there was cameron oh the sophomore unable to catch up to it titans though unable to really handle the throw in as that one goes off the chest of Maya Herringhouse and out of bounds and a throw in coming up for Wapak and they will run in a substitution coming in now. Like that's Gabriella Rainey, a sophomore defender, will take the throw. 24-25 remaining in this first half. Titans up 3-0. Redskins looking to get some attack as they have the Titans back in their defensive third. Quick clearance, and that one deflected, but then collected by Herringhouse. Herringhouse centers right back to her. 
on the one two. She'll get it out on the right wing. Take it to the middle, left puts it into the box. That one is loose and punched away. Getting her foot on it was uh, McKenna Bailey. McKenna able to just get a little foot under it, got a little backspin, but got it out of harm's way. Yeah, Clara Beach actually did a very good job on that, getting position, being in scoring position on that cross. Another a wide on the shot. Another throw in coming for Ottawa Glendorf. That one headed into the box. Can't get clearance. And there's Brown. Brown centers it. And here's the shot, and that one is deflected down, but another loose ball, and there is the hat trick for Bree Douglas. And she'll get her third goal of the game on three shots, make it four shots for Douglas. And with 23-31 remaining here in the first half, Ottawa Glendorf now leads by a score of four to nothing. We'll be back with more on WOSN right after this. Back at Ottawa Glendorf here on WOSN, Western Buckeye League Girls High School Soccer, our order of business. And Ottawa Glendorf taking care of business right now. 23-24 remains in the first half, and the Titans lead 4-0. But Wapak with a little something, opening, centering pass, trying to put it out there for Kayla Carter, but cleared away from her. There's Bree Douglas. She's having herself a game as she has a hat trick now. That's really doing the job on the left side for the Titans. You said it earlier too, Doug, about not stopping until, you know, and, and both of those have been rebounded from the uh, keeper, and she's right there, right there, or somebody from the Titans has always been right there to put it in. It was a nice save by Madison Springer on the initial shot. Yes. I believe that shot came from Carson Erford. We got Springer down for three saves already, but two of those saves bounced back into play and ended up in the back of the net as the Titans just kept coming forward. That's a big kick into the middle and back to Douglas. Douglas being challenged tonight. That was the right way to defend her right there. That was Gabriella Rainey, the sophomore defender. You got to be physical with Douglas. Try and slow her down a little bit. Make sure you don't get on your heels, and that was the correct way to defend her by Rainey. Nice job getting it out of harm's way. Well, and you said it right, too. I, I think that uh, uh, Madison Springer's had some good saves. I mm -hmm. think, what'd you say, three or four saves already? But, you know, it's just that there's so much force behind it, I think, that that, that rebound is just there, and, you know, giving Ottawa Glendorf the second chance. Jerry, eventually I'm going to have to do something about this B in front of yeah. me. This might not happen right now. <laughs> we'll see what happens <laughs> at halftime. Ball is cleared out till. Midfield, Oberding had it stolen away. And the Titans are able to knock it out to Herringhaus. Herringhaus sends it over the left side as the Titans switch fields to Has Hazelman. And she'll put it in the box, deflected away by Audrey Sparks. Redskins collected, sent it up to Oberding. She tried to drop it right back, but the Titans were there as Erford got a foot on it. And play on, there's the shot, and that one is saved. A shot on goal by Maya Herringhaus. But a nice save going to be made by Springer, who brings it down. That time, the Titans didn't have anybody come, but right. Springer did a nice job of bringing well, it down did right do in front nice of her body. Yes, she's she able did. to cover it up, and that doesn't get away. Well, Doug, you know all so well about uh, keepers and their, <laughs> you know, the pressure on keepers and how important, obviously, they are to the game. Obviously, you're talking about my indoor goalkeeping <laughs> career. Ended with a broken thumb there at Bluffton Recreation Center. <laughs> <laughs> Set out of bounds. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it's a position that there's a lot of technicality to it. I, you know, you get on the highlight reel for the diving saves. You don't right. get on the highlight reel for taking away the angles on the shot. Yep. You don't get on the highlight reel for coming out and playing that ball at the top of the box rather than it coming back to get you. It's a highly technical position. Right. And, uh, you know, your hat's off to anybody who volunteers to wear that long sleeve jersey. <laughs> yeah, we saw Madison Springer come out on the yeah. one, and it was a right move and uh, saved a goal on that. It's a nice cross over to the right side to Hannah Wood. Wood trying to turn the corner. Good challenge made by Maggie Verhoff. Still a battle for possession, and that one last touched by the Redskins. Quick throw it again. Ottawa Glendorf does not waste time. I think the only time they hesitate on a throw is when they have a sub coming in. Yeah. More than halfway through this first half, Ottawa Glendorf up 4 nothing. Jerry's going to deal with this B. I appreciate you waiting for me to back away from the <laughs> B before swiping at it, but 
Jerry's going to get the assist for getting that out of the box. And we here. saved the life of a bee. <laughs> Madison Springer, that's good. They're pollinators. You're right. Madison Springer sends that one away. Redskins just trying to get it across midfield. Collected by Cutlip. A junior defender, a nice move by ordering to get it back. Looking to set something up. That's a nicely played ball into the box, but nobody home in a white jersey and set away by the Titan defense. Auburn has done a nice job, you know, so far, you know, on this left side. She's getting, she's had very little rest as well. I like the idea on that, uh, that chip into the box, try and get a runner on that as the Redskins in their attacking third, looking for a drop to set it up. They get one as they get it over to Muller. Muller though challenged and has the ball taken away. Down the line, left side, that's not gonna find a tight as Tegan Lawrence comes away with it. Lawrence will send it out of play and the Titans will have a throw in after the substitution. Coming over here to the near side for the Redskins will be Lily Jenkins, a sophomore forward and midfielder. Looks like she'll be playing midfield in this position. And that one's sent out of play. Titans dangerous in this spot, a throw in. There's the cross, nobody on the back side. That one kind of hung on and Erford puts oh, wow. it across the net and out of play. The shot goes wide to the left. I didn't think a Titan was going to be able to get to that. I didn't they didn't either. seem like their spacing was quite where they wanted to it, but the ball had a lot of backspin, or there's a crosswind we're not aware of, and that ball slowed up nicely it did, for Erford. Yeah, it did look like a lot of backspin on the ball. Springer sends that forward. Overton comes out with it. Wanted to go to the left side, and... Oh, we got a little physical collision there. Referees say play on. Ball sent through, trying to get it to, to Ashlyn Siefker. And the Wapak defense going to send that one away. Last touch by Audrey Sparks. And a shout out to these two officials, Don Bott and Josh Mullenkamp. You know, there's so few of them right now that, yes. uh, you know, again, only two on this game, and that requires a lot more on their part. You see that in high school more often than not. There's a shot, and that one went wide to the right, just off the left foot of the uh, tight. I think that was Megan Horseman who yeah, was Yeah, Megan Horseman yeah. wants that back. Yes, she does. Maybe not her strong foot with her left. Right. Tip of the cap for trying to go with the uh, weak foot, though. That one just ends up going wide to the right, and no harm done as the Titans lead will remain at four. Goal kick comes out to the near side. Lily Jenkins left puts it down the field. And Oberding takes advantage of the slipping cut lip. Oberding taking the midfield, but stolen away by Carly Brinkman. Brinkman maintains possession. That one not quite the right weight on the pass, and the Redskins able to steal it back as Cameron Alt comes up with it. There's a chip forward. Can Oberding catch up to it? The Titans have numbers closing on it, and that'll be sent back down the field by Hovist. Back and forth between midfield as Hasselman comes up with it. That last ball on, on this side, you could really see the speed of Oberdink. I think in that freshman class, they have freshmen and sophomores, they have quite a few getting quality playing time, doing a good job. Passed on the left sideline, looking for Delaney Doling. That's going to be out of play, though, and a throw in coming up for the Redskins. We'll run some subs on both sides. Both teams doing a good job, you know, and Michelle, Coach Michelle Meg having a lot more uh, depth to play, but uh, using their benches very well. Brings us to just over 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Well, the Titans got the hot start that they wanted and still maintaining the bulk of the possession in this game, although the Redskins have had a couple of opportunities. Hazelman's chip bounces across the goal box. It'll be deflected. Jenkins giving chase, but being chased by Maya Herringhouse. Throw in is put down by Audrey Sparks. Again, taken away by Mackenzie Recker. Recker puts one forward to Aldrich. Aldrich left foot. That one had a little bend on it, but yes. it'll get wide to the left and will go harmlessly back to the bus garage. 
And the Titan passing has been excellent throughout this. It has been. They do a good job. They know where they keep their shape. They know where everybody's moving to. They put it out in space, let their players run onto it. And so far, they've been the ones putting the bulk of the pressure on the ball. And I think that, you know, really shows their experience. You know, they've played together for a couple of years. And That's a nice corner kick into the box. First corner of the game, I believe. And there's a shot. That one deflects off a defender. And will be set wide. Overdig trying to help her mates get it back down the field. Horseman sends it forward. That one bounced off of a Titan right back to her, but picked up by Wrecker. Bounces out to Paige Overding. Looks down the field. Trying to cut it to the right. And Carly Brinkman takes it away momentarily. Overding now left foots it into the front. And Redskins, nobody home in a white kit. However, they did get a touch on it before it bounces back to Brinkman, who sends it towards the center circle. Carly Brinkman, you know, for the Titans, really been tested on this side with uh, Oberding. She's done a very good job, only a sophomore. And she certainly has. As that one's going to go out wide to the right. Hannah Wood has it taken away. Sent forward, looking for Aldrich. And that will be played forward to Micah Aldrich. Gets the corner, trying to get to her right foot, puts the shot, finds the right corner of the net. And the Titans now lead by a score of 5 nothing with 13-18 remaining here in this first half of action. We'll take a timeout back before on WOSN right after this. Back to Uncle Glenn, Doug Jenkins, and Jerry Snodgrass with you for girls high school soccer in the Western Buckeye League. It's Ottawa Glendorf leading 5 0 now with 13 18 remaining in the contest, or in the first half of this contest, I should say. It's Micah Aldrich who finds the back of the net. It's nicely played to her on the left side. She did a good job getting around the defender on the left side, and that's where the Titans have had success. We've seen Bree Douglas score two times from the left. Now Micah Aldridge finds the back of the net from the same side, and here come the Titans on that same side again. There's a left foot, but that one will be deflected past the end line by McKenna Bailey, a corner kick coming up for Ottawa Glendorf. This will be their second corner. And their the positioning evening. and the passing skills, their footwork has just been tremendous, and that's her 41st career goal. Well, here's the key is that they they don't wait. And Wapak's been in good defensive position. They've been able to dig the ball out of some, some dangerous places, but they're under duress immediately when they go to clear. As a result, here comes that corner, and we had a whistle. And I think we're going to do that one all over again. Now, if you ask me why we're doing that again, Jerry, yeah. I don't have a good reason for it. What the referees... Let's see if... Uh, Get a good look at it. It's a nice left foot into the box. It's going to drift behind the goal and harmlessly out of play. But nice back, kick from there, though. Yeah, absolutely. Good distance from the left foot. I mean, it's it was center. It just didn't Correct. quite put yeah. it out in front where you wanted it. But back to this Wapak defense. I think they've done a good job on the initial point of attack of deterring or deflecting. It's just that they have no time right. to handle the ball. They try to play back out to Jenkins, and there's an example of it. They try and get it to the outside. Herringhouse comes up with it. The right, that one was deflected, and Madison Springer in the right place for that. Good job by the keeper to watch that off the deflection, as I believe that one last touched uh, Gabriella Rainey here on the near side. But the junior goalkeeper not phased by that deflection. Ball out of play, throw in coming Wapakoneta. Here's a throw, nice turn. Through ball. And with the ball is Carly Brinkman. Brinkman, a nice job turning it back to her left. The Titans again trying to attack from the left flank. Looking to play it down the line, but stolen away by the Wapak defense. Play it forward and Trying to get it to uh, Michaela Bailey. Bailey bringing it back towards the middle. Had it deflected initially, got a foot on it, but now the Titans will send it away off the foot of Megan Horseman. That was a good see steal on the right side of the field by the Redskins. You know, usually, Jerry, when 
you play tight against the defense, it opens you up to a counter opportunity. And we have not seen that. Right, the Wampak haven't. has not had a chance to break away on a counter just because of the way the Titans have been able to get those deflections and, and really make sure that they're not able to play a long right. through ball. But not something I would discount for the remainder no, of this game. Not I at think all. the Redskins are will find a way to break through and uh, get up to this front three players, they can do some damage as they're moving downhill. Early in the game, we saw one opportunity that way. And I think, again, like you said, I think I think you're going to see that develop. We got a handball over there on the right side. So Wapak sent down. Tegan Lawrence to Oberding heads it up, trying to work it over to uh, walk off. And the Titans able to deflect it away from her. That one played a little strong by Gabriella Rainey, but she got it right back. Olberding trying to turn to her left and faces a tight double team. Stolen away and now brought back downfield by Wrecker. Wrecker lays it out to the right side. Swinging over to pick that up is Tegan Lawrence. Lawrence, though, run off the ball by Mackenzie Wrecker. Wrecker, a nice pass down the line. The Titans will give chase. This is going to stay in play as it gets to Clara Beach. And Beach's cross is deflected out of bounds. It's going to be another quarter kick coming up for the Titans. So we didn't really see too many quarter kicks the first 30 minutes of this game. We've seen three here in the right. last five or so. This is going to come from the near corner flag. I think getting ready to take that is Clara Beach. It is Beach. Right foot over to the left side of the box. That's headed down into the box, and that will hit the outside of the net. It will be a goal kick coming up for Wapak. Strong kick that time. Oh, wait. Now they're going to say that it's a deflection off of the Redskin, so it's another corner coming. So yet another one. And Beach runs the width of the field. We'll take another corner kick here with eight minutes remaining in the first half. Titans leading 5-0. Now, I'm correct on this, and I think I am. If the Titans are up by six in the second half, it's into a running clock situation. Correct. That one nearly found its mark from the corner as Springer got a hand on it, able to deflect it long past the goal. And it'll be another quarter, so are they going to run Beach back over here? She's basically doing a <laughs> shuttle run across the field right now. Boy, she, she placed that perfectly, too. That was well in a dangerous territory. And again, credit to the junior goalkeeper, Madison Springer, getting just enough of the keeper glove on it to send it away. That one right footed in and headed. Back, headed the second time. Springer goes What high. a save. It what comes up with a save. It'll be her fifth save on the game. And sends it away. Maybe not quite as strong as the headers the Titans had hoped to get onto it, but got enough of it that would have found the back of the net had Springer not played it well. She did. And the game remains at 5-0. I'm impressed with Springer, you know, and some of those kicks early, which she dropped them, but they were just so much force behind the kick. Beach trying to again attack from the outside. It'll be deflected out of bounds. Beach will take a throw. We've got three subs for Ottawa Glendorf coming on, though. Now it's six and a half remaining in this first half. You can kind of tell right now, too, you know, we're getting down to that six minute mark, but you can really tell the. You know, they're so rested. You know, they're getting plenty of breaks, you know, and I think that's really going to show in the second half. Well, the Titans in good shape here to where they can play a lot of players up with a five-cushion lead, keep their legs. They've got a big game coming up this weekend against Liberty Benton. That's always a big non-conference matchup. Centering pass. Aldridge trying to turn to her left. Be poked away from her. And right there is where Walpock trying to get the counter. If they get one touch there, they're maybe off to the races as Michaela Bailey battling for that touch. The Redskins battling for possession. It finds its way back to Bailey. Bailey left foots it forward as she gets it to Muller. That one had a lot of backspin on it, but coming away with it is Savannah Wrecker, who sends it to the near side. Now they've moved Bree Douglas yes. over to the right side. Something to look out for. She was very successful from the left side here in the first half with her hat trick. Taking it into the middle of the field, Clara Beach. Beach to get that left on it, but that one will sail and out of play. 
you know, you mentioned the upcoming match they have with Liberty Benton, and that's one of the things I've always felt. Of course, you know, the proximity of these two schools, you know, makes it a natural game. But at the same time, when we talked in the open about the schedule where they've played Perrysburg, they've played Anthony Wayne. Soccer coaches do that. They're not they're not yeah. fearful of losses. And I, I, I have always respected that. I think they respect the game so well. And uh, they deserve a lot of credit for that. Beach again trying to send one in. And again, this is going to be deflected out. You have the fifth corner for Ronald Glendorf coming up. Even schools that struggle a little bit, you know, they, they put their kids in that position to, to learn. And, and again, it's a, just a great tribute to soccer coaches. Beach with the corner from the right side. It's going to be knocked down, but Walpock looking for clearance. Won't get it as it's going to roll out to Savannah River. An aggressive move by Madison Springer to come out and take that as it looked like it was Aldrich coming on the back side. If Springer doesn't come up with that, Aldrich may have a shot opportunity, but Springer takes it away. sideline and picked up by OG. Centering pass. Finds its mark in Brown. Brown to the right side. Douglas. Douglas goes back to her left. Launches another oh. one. She scored with a move similar to that on the opposite side of the box here in the first half. That one goes over the crossbar and out of bounds. You can see how many they're scoring opportunities right now, or at least their looks. They've moved Bree Douglas over to this side, the right side. And you can see a lot of these attempts now coming from the right side. He's a very, very good player. Springer sends it away, but that is immediately taken by Erford. Erford had it get away from her, got it right back. Beach fires right into the waiting hands of Madison Springer. That'll be her sixth save of the game. First shot on goal for, or excuse me, second shot on goal for Beach. Her first attempt found the back of the net. Beach looking to add to the Titan total. Gets to her left, puts the shot. That one's going to get away from her. And I almost thought that that was going to spin so, had much, so much side spin on it. It might stay in bounds, but we'll go out of play. And here comes another goal kick for Wapakoneta. Springer set to set this one away. One will bounce into the center circle. After getting forward is Kayla Carter. That one. Last touch. Oh, the nice way nice to get back by Hannah Wood. She had touched away from her. Bailey got a touch on it for Wapak. And it finds its way over to the Titans, but immediately back to the Redskins. So a battle for possession in Wapak's attacking third. It's a good effort by Wapak on this, you know, on, the, on that series right there that. They've been on the attack a couple of times here. Coming up with it is Bailey, but stolen away by Beach. Beach centering pass between the legs of Lauren Seifer. It was a nice smart play to let it get to the middle of the field. The Redskins sent it forward once. It'll be sent right back out of Beach closing, and that one will be sent away from her by Gabriella Rainey. And then sent out of play. No, kept wow. in play. Going up high, climbing the ladder to head that down was the Titan wing. And now they'll maintain possession at midfield as Madeline Hovis comes up with a Hovis through ball. And we'll get a whistle. And I think, no, they're going to call offside. Yeah, I'm really impressed with OG's passing. Oh, tremendous passing skills. Works aggressive as Ottawa Glandorf has been. Only called for offsides twice here in the first half. One minute remains in the first half. down as a shot on yeah, goal for I too, Wood. Yes. As did a nice job chipping it in, but a nice job by Ellie Crate to come up with the save. That's it's, it's, this is a good finish of the half for Wapakoneta. There's on the a attack ball end. and that's gonna be an offside on the Titans. I spoke too soon on the lack of offsides for Otto Glandorf as they get called forward and ensuing possessions there. Subsequent possessions I should say. 
just beyond that last defender. Springer sends it downfield. Titans just going to play this one away, and that will run out going to do it. Ottawa Glendorf leading by a score of 5-0 after one half of play in this Western Buckeye League contest. We'll be back with second half action after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf Sports Complex here in Glendorf. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN, Western Buckeye League Girls High School Soccer. Our order of business as the second half begins between Ottawa Glendorf and Wapakoneta. And on the Charles River Lab scoreboard, it's 5-0. It's Ottawa Glendorf. That was a about the most physical challenge we've seen there. Uh, today's scoreboard again presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring as the Titans trying to attack from the left side again. That is chested towards the goal and again a diving save by Madison Springer. And Never to make all that seven. happen, you, you, you have to go back to the steal, the footwork, ball control by Bree Douglas, the pass ahead that put him in perfect spot to take that shot. Yeah, it's not just a one or two touch combination. There was a lot going on there. As Aldridge sends it forward. She's on the board with one goal today. Of course, the big news in the first half there was Bree Douglas with the trifecta or the hat trick, if you will. There's a through ball played to Beach. Beach lost her foot. I think we're going to get a penalty kick yeah, here. And we, we are. certainly are with 38 53 remaining in the game. Beach bounced out to her left. She got tripped up. It was inadvertent, but it was a trip nonetheless. Tegan Lawrence got tangled up with her. It's a good job by Madison Springer right here, by calming her, her teammate down, and that's leadership. That's, hey, is that leadership yeah. like you just said? Well, Tegan that Lawrence is, is a freshman. Best. She feels bad about giving up this penalty kick. Certainly, again, no ill will on the, on the right. attack. She just did not get the ball, got tangled up, and you're going to have these happen sometimes. And now on the PK comes Micah Aldrich, the junior midfielder. She has two goals on the season, one here today, trying to get her second. And sailed it. That is a rare miss for Micah Aldrich from the penalty kick spot. And it remains 5 nothing with 38-53 remaining in the second half. And that's where Madison Springer's leadership comes in. Nobody hurt. Yep. Nobody hurt by that, you know. So, you know, again, she's telling that player it's okay. It's okay. Turn of the corner out there, and the ball has found Carson Erford early and often in this game. Erford centering pass, and that one finds its way into the gloves of Madison Springer. It's easy to tell when it's Erford with the cast on her head. There is a high punt from the keeper. That one is eventually going to end up out of play. Titans never actually got a boot on it, so it'll be an Ottawa Glendorf throw. And again, so quick. To yeah, the they run. waste no time getting that ball in. Douglas, a rare error there. As Bree Douglas tried to play it back into Lily Hazelman, but sent it behind her just a little bit. Hazelman's momentum would not allow her to get back to it. And I really like that out of the Titans, you know, that give them no time, get the advantage right away. Well, there's obviously some youth on this Walpock team. You've got a couple of freshmen out there playing big minutes. And so, and it's early in their first high school season as a varsity player. So anything you can do to accelerate the game right. for them, it hasn't, you know, it's it probably not to the point in the season where it's slowed down for them yet. Yeah, right, It'll correct. come. It'll certainly come for these talented players, but they're not there yet as freshmen. Douglas drilled a circle around and now bringing it down the left side. It'll be sent out of play. Getting to it is... Gabrielle Rainey, quick throw Titans. Beach turns the corner on the left side, looking for a centering pass, sends it across, and that one a little bit strong. Kenzie Recker comes up with it. She's going to drop it back. 50-50 ball, but the Titans come up with it as Horseman has it, and that one deflected out of play. We'll get a corner kick coming up. And, you know, you mentioned that with youthfulness, but Coach Mike Four for um, Wapakoneta for the Redskins, does he does a great job, and he knows that. He knows he's just, you know, g get the minutes. The game will come to them. Yeah, most definitely. You get that experience on the varsity level. You learn the speed of the game, and you're going to be that much better that much earlier in your career. 
Here comes the corner as the shadow gets cast here. That one deflected and I think it hit off the side of Beach's head. Madison Springer dives over to her left side, comes up with it. And give her credit for eight saves so far on the day. And she sends that one back down with a punt. No, too, Doug, you mentioned the speed of the game, and I, I'm just, and I know you see this too, but I'm just so impressed over the last 10 to 12 years how the speed of the game in the girls' soccer world has, has just gotten so much better. Absolutely. And as the Titans get on the attack again, they find Bree Douglas, cuts to her right, uncorks another one, and that one just wide to the left. He was looking for the hat trick plus one, that one just off the mark. She's fun to watch. Boy, she's can move left or right, dangerous on the left side. Back to your point of the speed of the game for the girls, and I would say for the boys too, and I think a lot of it comes down to we are getting to the tipping point with soccer where you've had a generation of now parents who have played the game and are able to, you know, we've had that for baseball and football and basketball for years, and really in American soccer, we're starting to get to that first generation of parents who played and can help out, and, and so the youth soccer is a lot stronger as a result of it. You start, they know how to play into space better, and they know to work downhill better. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how the game continues that, that to That is a great point. I mean, that's a, you're right. We, we saw that in girls basketball, you yeah. know, years ago when, you know, yeah, it existed, but it existed more <laughs> in that six-person game. You know, it wasn't basketball as we knew it. And all of a sudden, I, sometimes I even get amazed by that when somebody will say, well, well her mother was a good player. Yeah, well, really? You know, but I mean, <laughs> you can see the girls' game has evolved so much because of that. Same thing as you're saying with girls' soccer. Absolutely. And the sport of soccer in general. There's the battle for possession in the midfield. Certainly, I, yeah, it's, um, well, I can look back to the start of the Columbus crew back in 1996, Jerry, and yeah. going to Ohio Stadium to games. Now that's a nice centering pass coming out. Again, good aggressive move by Madison Springer to take that away. Uh, you go down to a crew game in downtown Columbus now, and it's 22,000 yes. strong yeah. in uh, the new lower.com field. And that's no accident. The game just continues to develop and, and get more popular. And as a result, you're seeing better and better players at the youth level and at the high school level who are getting better and better training. And that's sent out a play by, again, that will be Paige Oberding. And as that youth game has developed more and more with mm -hmm. quality coaching, you look now, kids, kids are growing up with soccer. You know, I mean, baseball, basketball, you name it. Well, yeah, they were growing up with it. They weren't with the sport of soccer. Now they yeah. are. I mean, you you know, moms and dads will take their, their son or daughter to a crew game. Absolutely. I mean, that's – so, again, that speaks volumes for where it's headed. That ball rolls out of – as an example of that, in the brief few minutes I had between work and heading out here today, I'll give you a hint of what was on TV when I got home. It was my son watching English Premier League. Yes. And not his favorite team, just a game. That one nicely sent down the field. That one played to the center by Beach. Nobody home, and then cleared away by Audrey Sparks. Douglas will drop it back. Nice back foot <laughs> moved by Clara Beach to go to the center. Now she sends it down the left line to Hazelman. Hazelman looking to send it in, but well defended and sent it a play. I think that one last touch by Hazelman. That's a good play here on the near sideline by the Walpock defense. And the Walpock defense has, has done very well this half. Yes, they have as it remains 5-0. We've played about seven and a half minutes of the first half of action, or the second half of action, pardon me. Hasselman trying to turn the corner left side, puts one low through the box. That one deflected around a couple of times and cleared away at the last moment by the Walpock defense. Trying to send it away there. It's Hannah Wood. We've seen her play forward. We're now seeing her play defense. Oh, pardon me, that's not Hannah Wood. That's going to be number 15. That's Gabrielle Rainey, a sophomore defender. Again, another young player from Wapox had her hands full. I think she's played, she's acquitted herself pretty well under constant pressure today. Yes, she has been. Throw will come from Heidi Schlenker. And that one deflected out of bounds by the Redskins. Throw in. Will come from Savannah Recker. And deflected out of bounds by Wapak once again. 
McKenna Bailey getting her foot on it. Turning the corner, it's Douglas again. Douglas left foots into the goal box, and that one cleared away out of danger by the Wapak defense. Oberding chased down, though, by... That'll be Michaela, or excuse me, uh, Micah Aldrich. Her mom's not going to let me live that one down, but <laughs> play will continue anyway. Aldrich, left foot over to the left side. That'll be offsides on the Titans. Fourth time they've been whistled for being behind the last defender tonight. Season 18 of the Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage all around, all season long, Fridays at 10 on WTLW. And again on the Charles River Labs scoreboard, 5-0 with 30 45 remaining in the second half. Here come the Titans again. There's a left foot. That one going to go wide to the right to the attack by uh, Lily Hazelman. A lot of different Titans getting into the mix tonight. For a while, it was the Bree Douglas show. And then you see players like Clara Beach really starting to light it up. And then Carson Arford had her time right. taking it over. Now you're starting to see Hasman really, the ball finding her feet. Right. And I think, you know, as, as this game progresses, we get down into the 20-minute mark. I think you're going to see with only the JV team playing half of a game, I think you're going to see a lot of those players if this, if this uh, score remains. Let's hope they listed them on the rosters that we were getting. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry. There's a chip forward now. Coming out of goal and coming up with it is going to be the sophomore keeper, Ellie McCrate. That's one of those counter opportunities that Wapak's been looking for. Able to get numbers coming right. down the field. The ball just got a little bit long from him. Heidi Schlenker tried to send it over to the left side. Ball bounced back, finds Audrey Sparks. And Sparks is going to send that one out of play. Throw and coming up, Ottawa Glandorf. There's the throw in. I tell you what, who's got to be working harder? The ball girls on the outside because the Titans want to throw it in so quick. Yeah. If you're not on the spot, they're going to let you know. Clearance, a couple of bad deflections for Walpock. Douglas sets it down, left foot, that'll go wide. And Springer not going to let it get into a goal kick situation. She'll be able to punt it, try and flip the field. She has the wind in her back here. The wind, not aggressive, but it's picking up a little bit as the sun goes down here. Out to Douglas. Douglas looking to drop. Works it back and now splits a couple of defenders. But she works well in tight spaces like that, Jerry. Working so well in the tight space, that ball was headed out of bounds and she was just able to keep control of it. And all of this is a result of that. Hasselman gave it away, got it right back. There's a chip into the box, but off the foot of Maya Herringhouse. She put the shot on net, but saved by Springer. Nine saves unofficially for Springer now. But it remains 5 nothing Ottawa Glendorf. That is a long punt again. Wow. Well, the wind kind of dying down there. She just set that down the field. It was a long and high punt. Yes, it was. Erford sent it over to the right side, chasing it down. Herringhouse. Herringhouse keeps it in play. Left foots it across the box. Douglas closing. Here comes Springer. Dives and comes up with the ball. Madison Springer able to negate the Ottawa Glendorf attack. And even there, though, you see Bree Douglas come out of nowhere. You know, and that was a, a good decision by uh, Springer, the keeper. Long punt down the field again. And if the Redskins can get a good touch off of that, that counter is going to be in play because she's absolutely flipping the field right now. We have mass substitutions, three on for the Titans, two on for the Redskins. 27-20 remains in the second half on the Charles River Lab scoreboard. Ball deflected out of bounds. Redskins will have, or excuse me, the Titans will have it. Possessed by Beach. Beach plays it forward, but that one will be stolen and taken away by McKenna Bailey, playing it forward as they get it to Kayla Carter. Carter, nice back foot move. Now she crosses forward, looking for Oberding. Let her just a little bit too much. Right idea. 
Just not the proper weight on the pass. And this time the Titans won't touch. They were able to. Now that did go out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Redskins and we'll get a couple substitutions either way as well. I believe Wapak next in action in Western Buckeye League as they'll take on Van Wert. Again, the Western Buckeye League in terms of soccer has grown by leaps and bounds yes, both it on has. the boys and the girls' side. And that's, I don't think there's a whole lot of gimmies in league play no, on either thing. side. Right, even teams that don't have stellar records through the last couple of years are still extremely competitive. You, you cannot look over them. No, absolutely. As that ball stolen away at midfield, nicely done by Andre Sparks. Sparks going to send one in, but that one will bounce long and pass the uh, end of the line. Just on the boys' side alone, I can remember playing against some of these Western Buckeye League schools. Now, we're going back to the 90s, Jerry, right. so, you know, put on your Nirvana T-shirt and, uh, <laughs> and go on a journey with me. But uh, the likes of St. Mary's and Kenton, Kenton uh, yes. uh, they, they were not where they are now in terms of, of soccer uh, clubs. And, uh, I mean, they're just so strong. Right. And it's just up and down the Western Buckeye League now. And uh, the girls, have you've seen a lot of the same growth. Right. Defiance is very competitive. Yes. We didn't take away too many wins from any Western Buckeye League opponents. <laughs> Oberding, nice move to her left, uncorks one with her left side, and that one will bounce wide to the right. Like the aggressive take, though, from Deep Seaf, you can catch the keeper off guard a little bit. And again, Ellie McCrate now staring into the setting sun over in the West. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a very challenging thing right now. People may not realize that, but you're right. Looking into that setting sun, it's so bright. Basically not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> it's a very nice day. It was Maggie Verhoff who took the goal kick. Now that's a nice pass down the left sideline as they get it to Brown. Marissa Brown cut off, though. Nice defensive angle taken by McKenna Bailey to steal the ball back for the Redskins. Yes, McKenna Bailey, the senior defender, did a very good job of that on that takeaway. Almost a steal of midfield. And Redskins going to get another look at it here. Walk off. Trying to find some space to work, but surrounded by navy blue jerseys who send it back to midfield. Nice touch back to the middle of the field by Delaney Dooling. And that last touch just a little bit long as Andre Sparks comes away with the steal. There's the chip down the field. Coming up to the top of the box, though, to greet the ball is going to be Ellie McCrate. Nicely done by the sophomore keeper there. 23-36 remains in the game. Oberding, she could have got that over the yeah, top just of can't the quite get there. Yeah. To them. Had the right idea, just didn't quite get enough air underneath it. And the ball ends up back at midfield as that one gets away from Hannah Wood. And that just strikes me as speed, strength, age. Yep. You know what I mean? Experience. I, uh, you, you know, again, I'm impressed with Wapakadena. For, for as young as they are, um, I think, you know, they've, they've done a very good job. I really believe that. And we've got some subs coming in on the throw-in. That'll be Ottawa Glandorf throw, I believe. This is a sport, too, where the, uh, the experience factor, you know, the age, really, really makes a significant difference. You know, the speed, the strength. Throw in coming up here for the Redskins. Overding tries the draw back, but a couple of Titans in there. That's a nice move to her right by Hovist. Hovist couldn't quite get away. Again, she was under some pressure, and that's why she wasn't able to place that ball where she wanted to. Good battle for it, and won by Tegan Lawrence. Jerry, let's go back to the the penalty kick earlier in the half. It was Lawrence who got called for the foul in the box, settled down by Springer, and now Lawrence able to make a nice exactly. steal under pressure there in midfield. You know, that can go another way where your teammates come down on you for doing yep. that, and you don't have the confidence to make that move at midfield. Uh, you, know, you like what you see out of that. You do. I think that sometimes that's underestimated how much, you know, how leadership shows itself. And, you know, we all think that leadership is rah-rah, you know, 
yelling, screaming. No, it isn't. It isn't at all. And I'm very impressed yeah. with the young lady that, uh, you know, that I wish there was video of that for everybody to see, <laughs> you know. Kind of a master class in leadership right there. Yes. I'm going to get, I think the ball got out of bounds, and it will be a throw in Ottawa Glandorf sliding over to, yeah, I think a handball perhaps. They often say that an act of leadership is 100 times more valuable than someone talking about it, you know, or yelling, you know. That, that was a good example of it. That's a coach on the field when you've got that. Madeline Hovis going to take the free kick here. Gets her right foot into it. And that one got over one defender, but chested away over to the left side. I think Sparks was the one to get a touch on it. Titans, though, continue to put the pressure on. And as they try and play it back, that one just off the mark intended for Delaney Dooling, the freshman forward. Sub coming in for Wapak. At the halfway point here of this second half, and on the Charles Rivers scoreboard, is 5 nothing in favor of Ottawa Glendorf. Again, today's scoreboard presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs. CRiver.com to apply today. The ball chipped in the goal box. Going out to greet it is Madison Springer. And Springer, she's going to throw this one out. Looking to get down the field and fast as she gets it to Hannah Wood. Wood plays it down the sideline. Got around one defender. Titan defender closing in and putting it out of play is Madeline Hovest to slow it down. And I think maybe she skipped it off. Yeah, she did skip it off yeah, of the did. Redskin attacker there. So it'll be a Titan throw in. That was a good job by Hannah Wood, though, getting down the field. Substitutions and mass for Ottawa Glendorf. I think we're going to see a lot of different numbers here for the rest of the stretch, like you said, Jerry. Yeah, like we said, I hope they're all on the roster. <laughs> if not, moms, we apologize. Ball played forward to Bree Douglas again with the hat trick. But well, she really is the one who set the tone early in this she game sure for did. Ottawa Glendorf. Really controlling that left sideline, always putting uh, Wapak under attack, and that's how the Titans were able to get out to an early lead. She never slows down. I, I, you know, she's just always on the move. Ball chipped forward as Michaela Bailey gave chase, but too much on it. And coming out to get that is Ellie McCrate. Micah Aldrich threw some traffic. Goes to the right. And now battle for possession. Sent out of play by Ottawa Glendorf. Or last touch by Wapak, whatever you want to choose there, Jerry. Yes. <laughs> Coming up, Ottawa Glendorf. Battle for possession in the midfield. Yeah, the shadows have extended beyond the midfield line here. Attack coming in from the right side by the Titans, but a good defensive move there by Tegan Lawrence. Trying to steal it away from Herringhouse. Herringhouse did a good job battling back to get it, tried to cross it in. It's sent back out of play, throw in coming up Ottawa Glandorf. Wrecker puts it back and uh, it's going to be deflected a couple of times. Again, Michelle Mack got to be happy with the way that her team came out and played here. Got to be happy that she's able to run so many people in. As we said, big non-conference game coming up Saturday. There's a left foot into the box. I think that's Aldridge put it in there. You could really see that. Like you said, that first 10 minutes, kind of a feeling them out, you know, yeah. what, what can we do best? And then they, they just turned it on at that point. Okay, now we know. Let's go after it. And those five goals were all scored, you know, from the between the 34-minute mark and the 13-minute mark of that first half. Douglas sends it over to the right. I think that Saturday game is going to be very interesting as Liberty Benton graduated and lost their – a smaller team than they have been, but they are quick. I think a good portion of them on the track team and not in distance events, no. Jerry. <laughs> you like to see that, though, too. Printers all the way around. I think that'll challenge 
Th that speed will challenge OG, too. I, uh, yeah. You know, right now we've seen so many opportunities here where the ball has been cleared. You know, there's just not quite the speed there yet from Wapakoneta. The team that has that speed, it's going to show. Aldrich, a long-distance shot. Springer comes up with it. Aldrich has taken four shots. She's connected on one of them. Excuse me, she's taken three shots and connected on no, one of them. Ball sent down to the left sideline. Looks like that'll run out of play. Throw in coming up, and it will be a Wapakoneta throw with 16 minutes left. And throw in deflected. Titans will take a throw. We are now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. I'm glad to hear you say that, Doug. I mentioned this on our broadcast Friday that uh, what it exemplifies. John Reed was my cousin, and I'm so glad that the station has, mm -hmm. has done this to – you know, everything that he stood for, and it really represents him well. Well-deserved accolades. That was another aggressive play there by Madison Springer, by the way. Centering pass, and it's going to be another corner kick coming up for the Titans. It's going to be about the eighth corner kick they've had this game. I think that was Ashlyn Siefker on that, I believe. I couldn't quite tell who was who made that left-footed Kick. Maybe I'm, I couldn't quite see that. I, I didn't catch it either. We're going to blame the shadows being yes. cast. Yes. We have old people eyes now. That corner is wow. headed up and over. I believe that was Aldrich who got up there. Titans do a nice job on their corner kicks, playing them really tight to the net. And at the right height, they're not tight to the net where the goalie just runs right. underneath it and gets it. They're tight to the net and someone's going to head it on the opposite side and it just about had an opportunity there. And of course when you've got a big physical target like Micah Aldrich all the better for you. Yes. Aldrich plays it forward. Through ball. Deflected away by Schlenker. Aldrich keeps coming though. And that'll be deflected out of bounds by Clara Beach. Clara Beach has had a good game and uh Bree Douglas is still in on the left side here. Beach with the goal, Aldridge with the goal, and three for Bree Douglas. That accounts for the Titans, five on the scoreboard. Left foot sent right back to the center. Hovist will come up with it. Hovist back to the left. Through ball. That's nicely played to Mike Aldrich. Aldrich. Wanted to go a little bit longer. Goes right back to her. Now she'll keep this one on the ground as she works it up to Beach. Beach tried to move it to the center. Moeller going to send it long. Titans controlling possession. Certainly if we had a possession chart, it would show Ottawa yes. Landorf highly favored in that area. Just great spacing and good passing. Douglas on the left side centers. That one headed up. And now coming out to get it is Madison Springer getting her head on it. It was Maya Herringhouse, and again, Douglas making something happen from the wing. Walpock sending it forward. Battle for possession there over on the right side. It's a nice move to the left by Kayla Carter. Carter. Sends in the box, but did not get the touch on it that she was looking for, and that one will roll harmlessly into the hands of Ellie McCrate. Gets her right foot on it, sends it back towards midfield, back underway. I think he, really, you can start to see the fatigue, I think, by Wapakoneta. Both teams, really, but yeah. really, especially, you know, a little undermanned with a kids hurt, you know, and, and not as deep a roster for this game. Aldridge tried the through ball, but that one had a lot of heat on it and rolled back to the keeper. They'll send it back downfield. 
Sure, if I'm not mistaken, the last soccer game you and I called was that monsoon over at Liberty Benton. Yes, it was. The Eagles and Riverdale. and Monsoon in yeah. about felt like 25 degree weather. It was the first day of fall, and fall came in uh, with a vengeance yes, in 2021. So I'm happy we get we get an opportunity to call a game where we can actually see the numbers and not get rained on in free, freezing temperatures. Speaking of that, what a beautiful evening it, it has is. been. Just enough rain recently to keep the field yeah. soft. It's a well-maintained pitch here at Ottawa Glendorf's Athletic Complex. They've been using this facility. It's probably one of the first soccer-specific fields in Northwest Ohio. They, they started using it in... 96, 97, yep. somewhere in that range. I know Finley has had theirs for yeah, Elmer forever. Yeah, that's a great yeah. field. Yep, that is. That is that is just a yeah, – I know from my years there that you didn't touch that field. <laughs> <laughs> Defense having to hustle back to that one for Wapak. Tegan Lawrence battling for it in some traffic. There's a shot, and that one Aldrich sends wide to the left. Mike Aldrich just trying to add one to her total here. She – Sailed a penalty kick. She's had some opportunities here, just has not been able to find the back of the net for a second time. You know, I, I was talking about Finley there for a minute, and I had the good fortune of talking to John Hayfield uh, here a week or so ago at the Trojan Club golf outing, or Trojan golf outing, and, and he was a player when I was the athletic director there, and um, he's really, really done a wonderful job in terms of he teaches there, and that's somebody I'm really proud of. Jerry, we were talking about the growth of soccer in, in the area and in the state, and I think facilities are another area where you can can really measure how how different things are that when soccer really started to take hold. Last year, my son's team, uh, his freshman in high school, I think they played one game on a shared grass stadium between football and basketball. Wow. When I played in high school, that was almost exclusively what you played on. Yeah. As it cross into the box, and Madison Springer going to climb the ladder, bring that one down. Yeah, that's not an afterthought anymore. I mean, that's – I think people have seen, uh, you know, the value of how many kids yeah. play it. I mean, just look at, you know, there's so many kids, they love to play the game. They're active. Well, and it's, it's good for soccer. It's good for football, too. You get girls and boys soccer and football on the same grass field, and you've got a rock at the end of the year. It's, it's hard to maintain that. Yes. It's, uh, granted, it's a lot more mowing and acreage for you to have to take care of with the lawnmower, but – it's a better playing surface yes, for it is. all the teams. Yes, it is. It most certainly is. And you're seeing now more and more of the field turf fields come into play for soccer. And those are a lot of times the more shared use facilities. Yeah. In fact, here at Ottawa Glendorf, they just put field turf in at Titan Stadium. Now, this will maintain, this will continue to be their main facility. But when it's rainy and muddy, they, they have moved to Titan Stadium Correct. and able to do that. You know, it's amazing when uh, field, uh, field turfs and, and artificial surfaces really started being put in. Soccer did not like it. Right. I mean, it was just. It was weird to see. It was really know, weird to see at first. That's, the game is fat. The you know it's yeah. faster, and it just wasn't soccer. And that's what coaches would tell you. They didn't want to play on it. And that's why, again, a situation like this is very, very good. Crossing the box, can Douglas get her fourth? Nope, that one just not get it. Couldn't get the strike on it. But another save for Madison Springer. Despite the five goals past her, has had a night. She's up in double-digit saves for the evening. Yeah, it is a much faster game on the turf, but the one thing that I've noticed and I didn't expect until you started watching more of it, you get a truer bounce you do. on yes. the turf. You don't get goofy bounces in the box that uh, are infuriating right. for goalies and defenders. There's a lob. Here comes Douglas. Douglas trying to set it down. She's got a couple of white kits in front of her, goes to her left, crosses it, and that wow. one goes wide over the outstretched hand. Springer stays in play. Now Aldridge sends it in. Walpock just trying to get it out of harm's way. Now getting a foot on it is Mackenzie Wrecker. That shot goes wide to the left with 7.35 remaining in the half. Little barrage there that they've been able to, they're able to survive that. A lot of opportunities there. Certainly has been. Look, it's not like Ottawa Glendorf has stopped attacking here with this. No, that's exactly they continue right. continue to, to play, I think, the same way for the most part as they did the first half. And it's been a great half for Wapakoneta. I mean, all these, all five goals scored in the first half. There's the goal kick. Headed up and now set down by Wrecker. Kenzie Wrecker plays it forward. Aldrich, Aldrich trying to get it to Beach. Ended up connecting with Beach. Now Beach 
Cuts it back to her left, left foot, right into the hands of Madison Springer. I've got Still Springer though, for 13 saves yeah, tonight. Oh, yeah. What, what great passing and great, great footwork ball control by the Titans. Ball chested down by Lily Hasman. Drops it back, and Savannah Wrecker under some pressure, trying to get it back to Hasman. Makes a nice turn to her left, sees the field, carries it a bit. Looking for Douglas, put it a little bit behind her. But the Titans are going to continue to press forward as they get it to Carson Erford. Erford to the right. Coming into the left now, cutting back to the right. Aldridge trying to find something, shot and right into the breadbasket of Madison Springer. Almost feels like it's getting personal for Aldridge at this point. Yeah, I think so. Once that second goal of a multiple goal game, and boy, Springer just denying her at a couple of opportunities. 5.45 remains in the game. Again, Ottawa Glendorf up 5-0. They came out, put the pressure on from the get-go. Got up early on the scoreboard, haven't looked back. But it's been more of a back-and-forth battle in the second half. And you see a lot of probably different combinations on the field yeah. for the Titans and for the Redskins, for that matter, than perhaps uh, they would have in the first half. So players, although here we come again. As Mackenzie Recker looking to get the corner, she does. Is she going to drop it back? Yep, there's the shot. That one finds the back of the net. No doubt about it, as Clara Beach gets her second goal of the ballgame on her third shot. And Clara Beach finds the back of the net for Ottawa Glendorf. We will take a timeout. Back with more after this on WOSN. And we are back here at Ottawa Glendorf on the Charles River Lab scoreboard. 6-0 now in favor of Ottawa Glendorf. That does mean a running clock, uh, although not much clock remaining in this game in the second half. Clara Beach, the score, uh, the assist by Mackenzie Recker. And you go back and you look at how that's set up. The Titans had numbers. Recker easily could have taken that shot. She makes the extra pass, gets the defense discombobulated, and it's an easy goal for Ottawa Glendorf. That was uh, an unselfish play, and the Titans are able to score as a result. And I haven't seen Oberding on the field for quite a while. I don't know if she... I haven't either, uh, now that you mention it. ...was injured, um, and I'm not sure I see her on the bench. Well, I Keep an eye her. on that. I don't see her either. Oh, yes, I do see her on the bench. And Never looks, mind. It oh, there looks she is, yeah. like she's icing something, so she may have taken a hit. Battle for possession in midfield, and now lobbed forward by the defense of the Wapakoneta Redskins. Centering pass, stolen away by Maggie Verhoff, senior defender for the Titans. Ashlyn Seeker, junior, trying to get possession for the Titans. There's a lob down the field, but getting a foot on it to stop the forward momentum is Heidi Schlenker. If you're the, sent out a play by Bailey. If you're the Titans, you really needed this game because, you know, they're coming off that 5-1 loss to Perrysburg, who is very good. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you want momentum back. And, you know, this home game, they've been able to do it. It's past uh, trying to just get it away from danger is Bailey. Bailey goes to the little the left side, of course, that's where the Titans have been dangerous tonight. That's where the first couple of goals came from was that left side. Coming up in the post game, we're going to try and be joined by Titan coach Michelle Mag. We'll also see if we can get a hold of Bree Douglas. Talk to her about her hat trick that she had tonight that's coming up after tonight's contest. Keep it right here on WOSN for that. That's a nice one, too as Ashlyn Seifert finds Olivia Grothaus. Grothaus taking it into the corner, turns the corner, gonna get tripped up. That's outside the box, but it will be a free kick in a precarious position. Titans will see if they can add another one here. And again, very selfish, unselfish play. Um, and again, these most of these are substitutes that have come in and we're not starters. So just they, they exhibit that all the way through the program. That's a great tribute to coach Michelle Meg. 
Delaney Dooling, freshman forward, will take the free kick. Puts it into the goal box. And a nice catch by Madison Springer. That was down below her knees. And she was kind of moving forward, not necessarily towards the ball, as she was trying to take away anybody yes. who could get a foot on it. Nicely done. Through ball to the middle. Uh, those through balls have gone through well. I mean, they've done a good job on, you know, maintaining possession. Titans working on the possession, and this has uh, some good connections here. Ashland Seifer and Olivia Grothaus, they found each other a couple of times here in the closing minutes of this. We're under a minute left. Titans will run one more sub on. Emberly Cutlip has done a good job mm -hmm. defensively in this in junior. Savannah Recker enters the game, and Maggie Verhoff will check out. Throw in coming from uh, Cutlip. Cutlip puts it in play. That ball sets down in the goal box. Now out to uh, Dueling. Deflected away and sent out of play with 25 seconds left. It's no more scary sight for a goalie or a defender than that ball just yes. sitting down in the goal box and nobody wearing <laughs> your jersey crashing it. Wapak able to get it away though with 10 seconds left. And Wapakoneta gonna move above 500 with the victory here as that will do it. Six nothing is your final score. And again, the Titans doing it in impressive fashion. They moved to two one and one on the season, getting three goals from Bree Douglas, Clara Beach with a pair, and Micah Aldrich adds one. Coming up for the Titan statistics, big number for Wapak. Big night for Madison Springer. There's six Titan goals on the board, but could have been a lot more damage. She ends up with 13 saves on the evening to lead the way for Wapakoneta. We'll take a timeout coming up in the post game. Try and get an interview with Titan coach Michelle Mag as well as Bree Douglas as our coverage of Western Buckeye League soccer continues on WOSM. Back on the post game here on WOSN, Ottawa Glendorf taking care of a Western Buckeye League rival here tonight. 6-0, your final score. I'm joined by Coach Michelle Mag as well as Bree Douglas, who came away with a hat trick. Bree, let's start with you. Uh, you were attacking early and often from the left side. What were you seeing over there that led to some good things tonight? Um, there's a lot of open space, and at the beginning, the, some of the balls were reflected out, and so finishing those were... They were just open, they were there, and it came down to placement, so. Absolutely, and Coach, that's one thing you have to be really happy about is your team really played those deflected balls well in the first half and, and got some rebounds into the back of the net. Yeah, I thought our strikers and forwards did a really good job crushing the net, you know, making sure anytime there was a deflection there, we had somebody to, to kind of frame that net and, and make an easy finish. And I thought, you know, Bree and, and the other forwards did a good job getting into space in that first half, right, and, and taking what they gave us, and there was some space in behind, and I thought they did a good job playing with pace in that first half to, to find some opportunities there. Coach, I heard you tell my partner Jerry Snodgrass that it's a work in progress, but uh, four games in, the work looks pretty good. Yeah, definitely a work in progress. I think, you know, it's important for us to make sure we just take it one step at a time, one game at a time. And, and I, I've been super kind of harping on making sure that we make every minute count, right? So we've got 80 minutes every game. We want to make sure every minute we're getting better. And, and I think we took a step today, right? Obviously, you know, still a work in progress. We got a lot we want to get better at, but we're heading in the right direction. Bree, you guys played a really tough team in Perrysburg in your last outing. How important was it to come back out, reestablish that winning record, get off to the win in the Western Buckeye League? It was definitely really important. Um, Perrysburg was really good, but it was important for us to grow and learn from that and then improve from there on. Absolutely. Well, Bree, Coach, congratulations on the victory. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. I didn't mean to almost hit you in the mouth with a microphone. That's unprofessional of me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Ottawa Glendorf victorious tonight over Wapakoneta by a final score of 6 nothing on the Charles River scoreboard. For Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Doug Jenkins. Thanks for watching High School Soccer on WOSN.